Welcome back to Wireless Essentials Part 2. I am discussing intermodulation distortion, and in this video, I'm going to discuss solutions to avoid it. The easiest and least expensive method is one you probably already are familiar with and may already be doing it, and that is just to simply use the scanning feature and group feature on your wireless receivers. Most modern devices have this feature, and essentially what you do is you set the device into scan, and it scans the local spectrum and avoids TV stations and other RF devices that may be transmitting. A uh, key part of this process is for you to turn off all your mics and IEM transmitters to begin with, so it doesn't need to avoid frequencies that you're going to change. And then once it's done scanning, it will suggest to you a group, a group of frequencies that um, are widely spaced away from each other as much as possible and a group of frequencies that avoid local interference and a group of frequencies that are spaced in such a way that when they do overload each other, when the devices get close to each other or that sort of thing and inner mods are generated, the inner mod frequencies are on different frequencies than the ones you are using. So the inner mods will be avoided. So please use this group feature, learn how to use it on your device. It's very, very quick, very, very easy. And don't out smart the computer. The computer can do the math for you to avoid IMD. You cannot. And so don't don't pick a frequency outside of the group. If you need to sign a frequency manually, make sure it is one that's in the group. That's a part of the suggested group. Now, a more fancy way of doing this is to use software to do it and not use the group's uh, frequency, not use it on the hardware, to use it in the software. There's a variety of software packages out there that are available. The ones from the manufacturers, such as Sure Wireless Work Workbench, and the one from Sennheiser are very good and very cool, offer a lot of advanced features, and they're free. There are um, commercial versions as well, such as Professional Wireless Systems IAS, and it's awesome as well. Uh, we use Wireless Workbench here at Nescom. It's great, and it can give you all sorts of features such as I am such as scanning such as a visual analyzer such as querying the FCC database and of course avoiding intermod frequencies so please learn how to use this software we use it on all our gigs and it works great and you can connect to it either wirelessly if your wireless rack has a um, has a Wi-Fi router or you can connect to it through your device Mac or PC with an Ethernet cable directly into the receiver so awesome tool for solving IMD problems. Uh, what these devices are doing, what the software is doing when they provide groups or they suggest frequencies is essentially separating the frequencies apart from each other. The so each device is far enough away from each other. So when they do interact and they do make inner mods, the inner mods don't fall on top of frequencies you're using. Uh, how close can the frequencies be to each other? That really depends on the device. Uh, newer devices can get closer. Older devices need to be farther apart. Um, and uh, kind of use the software to do this for you and you really don't have to think about it. Of course, if you're working in a metropolitan area where there is very little RF space free and you have to use lots of channels, you may need to dive into the software and start putting the frequencies closer to each other. And then at that point, you may want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, a general rule, keep IEMs and microphones as far away from each other as possible. But the software is pretty good at helping you with this. Uh, so I'm talking about, or I was just talking about, spacing the frequencies far apart from each other in the spectrum. Physical spacing, making sure transmitters and receivers are far away from each other physically, also really helps avoid IMD. So if possible, always keep your transmitters as far away from you as you can from the receive antennas. When they get close to receive antennas, perhaps you have a receive antenna backstage and the artist walks backstage holding a microphone. That microphone will overload the transmitter and then you get IMD. So a really good tip is to put your antennas up in the air, you know, 10 feet up or something like that. So when an artist walks by, the microphone is not very close to the antenna. So put them up as high as possible and space them far away from transmitters. Also, if you can, try to keep transmitters away from other transmitters. This may be difficult when two artists get close to each other and they're both singing a duet, but other situations you may be able to avoid. A classic scenario is the guitar player that has a wireless guitar pack, and they also have a wireless IEM pack, and the two can interact with each other. Or if they put the artist puts their cell phone in their pocket, now they have three wireless devices all interacting, and you can get quite a lot of IMD. So if you can, tell the artist to put 
their phone backstage and at least separate those packs on opposite sides of the body on opposite sides of their belt. That may help avoiding this IMD issue. Here's a nice picture picture showing backstage in wireless world. Obviously in wireless world, you have a lot of different mics and a lot of different transmitters all next to each other. This can create a lot of IMD. The antennas are usually nearby as well. Putting the devices in metal tins, metal will block, metal will uh, reflect RF energy and hopefully keep the nearby devices from interacting. Another good tip for avoiding IMD comes back to distance. It's that's using the, the appropriate antenna. Here at Nescon, we often use these paddle antennas, the one on the bottom here. These antennas are great. They let you work long distances. They have forward facing gain. These paddle antennas basically have a cardoid pattern. Um, they're great for large spaces. So if you're working a football game or something like that and you want to shoot across a long distance, that forward facing gain will help you pick up the transmission. But in a close space, say, such as in the Gracie Theater here at NESCOM, you, um, you really don't need that extra gain from the antenna. And it's best often to use these little whip antennas, these omni antennas that come usually included with the receivers and transmitters. It's just a smaller, simpler antenna. And with less gain, it's less likely to be overloaded when a wireless device gets close to it. Uh, also on your device, most devices let you change the amount of transition, uh, excuse me, change the amount of transmission power. Again, if you're working a football game and you have to shoot your antenna, you have to shoot your device over a long distance, going into the device, open it up, going into the little menu and setting it for a higher transmission power is a good idea because it will transmit farther. But if you're working in a small venue, like a small theater, like our Gracie Theater, you want to set it to the lowest possible power. With the lowest possible power, it's less likely to overload nearby transmitters, nearby microphones, and it's more or less likely to overload the antenna and the receiver system. So lower power is definitely the way to go whenever possible. It will also help your batteries last longer. A fancy solution that we don't need here at Nescom and Bangor, Maine is an RF filter. If you're working in a big city and there is very little RF space available, you may need to filter out a local TV transmission because you're working very close to it. These transmitters can be, these excuse me, these filters can be put in line on your antennas or right before your receiver. And it can, essentially it's a bandpass filter that's going to cut out a local TV channel. And that will allow you to possibly work closer to it and will avoid intermodulation distortion in your receiver between that TV transmission and your device. There are fancier versions of this, such as this multi-channel filter, which you can put in front of multiple receivers in which multiple TV channels can get isolated. So this is pretty cool. Here's some from the, um, from the, man from the manufacturer here is a document showing the yellow lines here are the transmissions that you actually want to catch. The red is the RF information in the background you're trying to avoid. And so by putting the trans these filters in, and these filters on this device are actually adjustable in width and all that, it's very, it's cool. It's, and you can cut out and reduce local noise. One final solution, one that we have done employed here at Nescom and many wireless providers have adopted in recent years is switching to di digital wireless systems. Gi digital wireless systems, basically, they still have IMD, but they experience far less of it. And you can have more channels in a smaller amount of spectrum. You also get great features such as uh, more transmission range and better battery life. Um, but you do have some latency issues because the digital processing means it takes some time to process the audio. At Nescom here in, in 2018, uh, facing a, a major spectrum reallocation from the FCC, we purchased 12 channels of Shure ULXD and it's been great. It's been a really great system and we have um, less IMD issues since this has happened. Um, there are other fancy solutions out there you know, if you're working in a really uh, uh, crowded RF environment, a big city, that sort of thing, there are more solutions for avoiding for both avoiding intermod and working with more frequencies in smaller smaller spaces. Um, and this slide says a lot of that. One, one thing is just like say Sure Axiant, their top end product. It's frequency agile. The product can jump between frequencies if it finds an intermod or finds interference. The product will automatically jump to a new free frequency. There's also a bunch of frequency ranges that are available. Um, 
it outside of the normal 500 for late high 500 high 400 to low 500 megahertz range where most of our devices work here in the United States but there are some other frequency ranges available in these new products so if you spend money and you learn a little bit more there are some fancy solutions to avoiding IMD but basically I've covered the easy solutions and some expensive solutions to how to get rid of IMD so have a good day and have a good show and make sure you avoid dropouts whenever possible thank you Bye-bye.